This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Uh, D. Donato uh, apparently was listening uh, to uh, QAM. No, no, wait. It's called the Joe now, right? Yeah, what a stupid ass name. Anyway, uh, Big O listening to Joe Rose this morning here in Ohio. He mentioned you. A texter made a reference that he got you canned at QAM. Joe said, not true. He always liked Big O and said he misses you. Thoughts? Uh, well, Steve in Canton, Ohio, and we'll see you in Canton, Ohio next year, Steve. And Steve, you better be with us at the Hall of Fame when we sing the Dolphin Fight song surrounding Shula's bust, okay? That is going to go viral next year. We're going to knock it out of the park with that. Remember that. Uh, as for Joe Rose, first of all, let me ask some of you out there, where do you guys come up with this, with this stuff? Joe wouldn't get anybody fired, bro. Joe's a good dude. Now, could Joe change his own producer? Sure. If he didn't like his producer, he could get a new producer like any host could. That if they don't like the producer they're working with, they're not good enough, you can change them. That you can do. But you think Joe is going to worry about what I do or anybody else? Look, dude, it's a terrible business. That's all it is. Just a bad business. And they fire good people all the time. All right? They fire my guy, Curtis Stevenson, who's as decent a human being as it gets and does an excellent job as a talk show host. They fire Josh Friedman, who's been working his ass off his whole life. I had a producer with me, Brandon Rodriguez. Okay, no offense, Bill, but he's been my best producer that I've had in my career. Okay, he was with me for seven years. All right, that guy grinded to hell that guy worked his ass off. He was sick of the business. I'm the first guy to tell you that. But Brandon is as good a human being as it gets. And they fired him because they, they needed to get money out of the bill. The same time they fired Curtis, they fired my, my producer, Brandon, and they fired JT Wilcox. JT Wilcox is an excellent writer, reporter. Uh, he was helping out on the website. He did like eight jobs for them. This is a terrible business, dude, okay? They fire great people. Forget about me, okay? And it has nothing, please. Don't ever do that to Joe or anybody else. You know why? Because people are stupid, you know? There's a section of you guys out there that you're really stupid. I tell Bill this all the time. There's a group of individuals that are really stupid out there, and they believe anything. And then, and seriously, the guy that probably sent that probably believes he might like me. He might like me so much he thinks Joe got me out. And it's like, no, oh, dude, no. My option was up, and they didn't want to pick up the option. And that's it. That's all, man. And, and like me, many others have gone by the wayside. That's all right. That's, you know, the rest of us, I'm, I'm doing just fine, Okay. Pandemic and everything, we're surviving, we'll be just fine, okay? I work for Sirius, I got the inter-gig now starting, we're all going to be good, man. We'll get through it, I'm not worried about it, all right? I'm a good employee, I've been at this for 30 years. I work my ass off, very few people work harder than I do in this business. So I know I'm never going to struggle to get a job, okay? But... I work in a business that there's a lot of terrible people above us that don't know anything. Program directors, guys like Len Weiner that couldn't find their assholes with a funnel, you know? And, and then you've got people above in management that are just as clueless as it gets, okay? Once Joe Bell left, there was nobody worth it in management in that place, okay? Greg Reed and Joe Bell and, and the Beasleys ran, that, ran them like real sports stations. Once CBS took over, they only took over to turn a profit and sell all the stations they bought from Beasley. And they sold it all to Intercom. Who the morons at Intercom, did you buy Intercom stock, Bill? 
No, I'm a little smarter than that. Okay. All right. Because, you know, it was at 15 bucks. It's down to $2. I, I, you know, I, what have I been saying for a long time now about intercom? Where are they going to? What's it called again? Uh, around the bull and down the hole. That's right. Bankruptcy. I've been telling them you that in, for a while. Them in uh, Alabama Roll Tide Roll. I mean, think about it. It's a local station. Think about the program directors and the people above. First of all, they name a station the Joe, which is stupid. It's like the worst name ever. And then they get Hawk and Crowder show, and since they don't want to pay for talent, then they simulcast it on two stations in the same market that cover the same same area. Like a real business would put the opposite show of Hawk and Crowder. Two women, hardcore sports show, something that's opposite of what Hawk and Crowder do. So you can generate more revenue on the other side. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, it really, I'm telling you, it just, it's just a terrible company. And, and, Joe, and that's unfair. to Joe's a good dude, bro. Okay? I can have fun with Joe. He and I can argue and, and go back and forth about Sue or Fasano or any of the stupid uh, dolphin arguments that we went back and forth on. That's fine. But Joe Rose is not worried about anybody getting fired. That's, you don't know Joe Rose if you, you clearly don't know Joe. Joe Rose will screw around. He'll bust your chops. Uh, he'll, you know, if something funny happens to you, he'll expose it on the radio, whatever. He'll, he'll have fun. But he's not a malicious dude where he's trying to screw people over behind the scenes. That, that you know, I saw that email and it was like, you know, like, come on, man. Come on. You know, it's just a terrible business. That's all it is, okay? That's all it is. When you fire Jade Alexander, bro, then I know what you are. You know what I mean? It's like that woman is cream. She's gold. She's got tons of sponsors. She's got ratings, everything. And why? Because you don't want – these people are, are stupid. Like our salaries are covered easily by our sponsors. So why would you fire anybody that pays for themselves over and over again? But that's, that's intercom for you, bro. You know what I mean? So, again, nobody, not Hank Goldberg, not Jim Mandich, not Joe Rose, not Neil Rogers. I've worked with all of them, okay? None of those guys were ever malicious in trying to fire people. There was one dude that was, that was like that, you know? But, you know, karma usually gets you and puts you out on the floor crying and sucking on your thumb and you're, you know, drunk on the street. So that's usually what happens to people like that when you do that. You know, karma gets your ass. Uh, Ray Grulon on the Super Chat. What? Super you did it. Chat. Uh-uh, no way. Yes way. No way. Yes way. They were fantastic. Super Chat. <laughs> ah, so it's, it's all good, man. It's all good. I, 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 I've told you guys this story before. I knew I was getting fired for 11 months. For 11 months, I knew I was getting fired. I had a meeting with the, with the PD, and when I was done with that meeting, I knew right away I was getting fired. And I went right to my producer, and I told him, that guy's firing me. Get out of here. Trust me. It'll happen down the line. So I knew every day I was going to work, I knew I was getting fired. So in November, when he called me to the office, I go, finally. It was like I had a smile on my face. It was one of those. You know what I mean? I mean, look at me the last nine months that we do this. Look at me. And then if you followed me, follow me the last two years at, at, at uh, QAM. And I wasn't very happy. I was pretty pissed off and frustrated at times. Because I know the crap that was going on behind the scenes. Uh, for me, you know where I knew I was screwed? Well, not me, but I knew we were all screwed. It's when, the Be when I got there and then the Beasleys sold to CBS. And then I saw CBS took us over just to turn us over. And then, and then Intercom took over and then they were incompetent. And it was just like, you know, 
I got there and the Beasley sold like eight months later or something. If I would have known that, I would have never gone back to QAM. You know, I went back because Joe Bell was there and I would, I would work for Joe Bell anywhere. I think he's in North Carolina now. If, if uh, I needed a job, I'd fly to North Carolina and work for Joe Bell right now in a heartbeat. That guy I would run wall, uh, through walls for. But unfortunately, that's the way this business is. It's a terror. That's why never, for those of you that are parents, if your child ever tells you they want to get into radio, please keep them away from radio. But you know how you got to do it with kids. You can't tell them you can't do this because then they'll do it. You know what I mean? And then they'll ruin your life because then they'll become a radio host, and you don't want them that. Trust me. You don't want them in this business at all. You're going to have to, you know, guide them in other ways. You know, play that, uh, play that, uh, si that child psychology game. Hey, oh, why is it that you get bothered by police officers that work out and look the part? I heard what you said the other day about the steroid cop. Where's that hate coming from? Did I generalize or did I just call that guy a Fuentecito out? And, and, and you know what, Rene Lopez? You're Hispanic, so you don't know about a Fuentecito que se cree grande y likes to shoot up and likes to fight and all that? You, you never met that guy? Huh, Rene? Are, are, you, are you acting dumb? Talk to me, Rene. You make it sound like that guy doesn't exist. You, you, never, you never met a, a guapito that likes to do the weights and, and all that stuff and, and always in trouble and trying to fight and now wants to be a cop because he wants to instill discipline? You, you never met that guy, Rene. Come on, bro. Let's go. Th this show is about honesty, Rene. My brother, if you can't admit that that exists in our community, I can't help you, brother. I can't help you. Now, if you want to generalize and say that everybody that is doing weights is like that, well, that's you. That's not me. I didn't say that. You can go back and listen to the audio. Okay? I specifically talked about that kind of guy. Okay? I've seen that kind of guy. And that kind of guy, that was roid rage right there. That woman was doing nothing. She was on her knees with her hands in the air. And his frustrations led to grab her and throw her down. So, Rene Lopez, my brother, if you can decipher what I'm talking about and you can't understand, I can't help you, my brother. Can't help you. Got it? Understand, Renee? Oh, I used uh, to commercial radio. It sucks. Some of the most incompetent people in the business, and I would buy stock in rotary phones before I would buy an intercom stock. Well, I mean, it's, it's down to $2, bro. <laughs> you know, you definitely don't want to do it. <laughs> Cookie Vice giving us a little love on the Super Chat. What's going on in there? Super Chat. Excuse me a sec. What are you babbling about? Super Chat. If he... Super Chat. We'll all... Super Chat. It'll be anarchy. It's out of my hands. Um, uh, Matthew Walker goes, Hey, O, oh, didn't your ex-bosses yell at you for saying Whiteside was a moron for losing his rifle? They didn't yell at me. It was, it was Len Weiner that sat down. And he goes, hey, do, do you have to call him a moron? Do you have to call him a, a, a moron because he, he did that? And I go, well, Len, he left a semi-automatic rifle unlocked in his car. So, yes, I am going to call him a moron. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I already knew I was getting fired by the guy. So what, I'm not going to be myself? And, and isn't Whiteside a moron? <laughs> yeah. Now, because the program director has no balls and he, you know, works in a skirt, that's not my fault. I can't do anything about that. If he's worried about if the heat are going to get bent out of shape and all that, I don't care. Okay? If the heat doesn't like that I called Whiteside a moron, the heat can, kick my, can kiss my ass. Okay? 
just like the Dolphins and the Marlins and the Panthers and everybody else in town, okay? I'm going to call it like I see it. And normally, I'm not off, okay? Maybe the program director disagreed with me, but 99.9% .9 of the audience agrees with me that Whiteside is a moron. Is Whiteside a moron, Bill? Uh, that is easily a yes. Okay, there you go. Okay? So, I mean, seriously, you know? So if you can't handle the truth, I can't do anything about it. it I, I love the Heat organization. If they're going to get mad at me because I said Riley made terrible decisions with Whiteside and James Johnson and Tyler Johnson, well, hey, too bad, bro. You can't handle the truth. Now, I know the Heat, so I know they don't get mad at stuff like that. The Heat is actually one of the few organizations I've dealt with in, in my history that they don't care if you rip them if they deserve it. If they know they screwed up, they don't care. Now, if you're making stuff up, that's when they get pissed. That's when you'll get a call. You know what I mean? I've never gotten that call, but that's because I don't need to make anything up. Call it like I see it. What, what is anybody in the heat going to call me? And defend Whiteside? No, they're not. What, are they going to call me to tell me, no, the Whiteside contract and James Johnson and Tyler Johnson, those were really good deals. No, they're not. Okay? They're, they're a smart organization. They're a good organization. They get it. But all the organizations in town also know that you're not going to call me to try to, you know, tell me what you want me to say. No, that's not going to happen. So, yeah, they, they told me about it, but I told them, nah, I'm going to call him what I want to call him. Uh, Jean-Luc says, who's not going to see a seven-foot-tall man leaving something unlocked in a car? I know, right? It's like, dude, just hold on to the gun while you're in the range, and then when you are ready to leave, you leave with your gun. You don't go putting it in the car and then walk back into the range. Oh, well, somebody stole it. Really? Idiot. Um, oh, you must have been listening to Elephant Riders this morning. <laughs> Raging Dolphin Maniac says, advertising agencies as other places you don't want to work for. I've never worked with more slime balls in one place in my life. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I've never worked in an advertising agency. I would have to take your word for it, Raging Dolphin Maniac, so I don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. I was amazed that they were able to get rid of Tyler Johnson's contract. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it took a while. But as we got closer that those contracts got closer to getting expired, then, yeah, you know, that's where you got a, you got a little bit of a break. Now, you were taking salary in, too. Okay, that, I, if I remember correctly, the way that worked out. So it, it wasn't as simple and clean as it looked. You did take something back in the process. All right, 786-322-1105. If you want to get in on the accidentlawfirm.com text line, that's 786-322-1105. I figured I had to... Uh, clear up that story just in case anybody was actually believing any of that crap with Joe because uh, Joe's a good dude that's not that's not fair to him